Howdy y'all, my name is Tyler Fireball, and today I'll be reviewing this scope right here. It's a Sightmark Wraith 4x32x50 day-night vision scope. Now, I'm not your typical salesman, okay? I'm just just a guy that wants to give a review uh, for a product that I really like. I probably couldn't sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves. I know I couldn't, right? But I, I probably couldn't sell a white popsicle to a woman in white gloves. And what flavors? What flavors white. A vanilla popsicle? Is that a thing? I don't. Maybe pina colada popsicle? I don't know. I couldn't. I could not sell that to a woman in white gloves either way. I wouldn't be surprised if Sightmark actually contacted me and asked me to take this video down uh, because I'm just. This is not what I do, right? I'm not a salesman. Now, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to give some pros and cons. What I like and what I dislike. Uh, most of this is going to be voiceover on some video I shot on it last weekend. Um, hunting in nighttime, hunting in daytime. Uh, took some awesome shots on some deer with it. 400 yard shot on a deer. Um, I just really like the product. Now, if you don't want to watch my sweet intro, skip ahead 20 seconds. <laughs> Alright, so for this first shot, it's a couple beavers I saw down at my pond. Uh, I just wanted to kind of break it out and look. Wait, I got a pirate beaver. Only one eye was reflective. I wonder how I lost it. Anyways, this is a couple beavers at the pond playing around in it. It's about 80 yards away, I think. Um, I really like how clear it is. You can see through the bushes without it, you know, backlighting too bad. Um, but on this first one I just wanted to show a little bit about what it could do and I was kind of excited to find out I had beavers uh, they hadn't tore up any of my trees in the yard yet so maybe I'll let them live who knows maybe that's a better video later all right so on this next one you got a trash panda at about a hundred yards I wanted to show how clear he was even behind a tree in some little bushes um, and kind of how I found him was his eyes reflecting, I guess is the easiest way. And on this one, I just wanted to show the detail of zooming in. I mean, that's that feeder with the uh, cactus print and there's some cactuses and uh, aloe vera on it, maybe. And then back behind it, you can see the metal from my bow stand legs, which didn't think we'd be able to see that. It's pretty cool. And then I zoomed out. I'm about 200 yards here, 250 maybe at the backside at the beginning of that. It's just pretty cool to see how far it can see at night. And this was a deer that was 250 yards away. I've been recording for about two hours and the battery on the IR admitter had gotten low. So I put new batteries in it and it's the same deer at 250 yards. Just incredible how much. That's the only thing disappointing about the scope is that it, you know, that light the batteries didn't last very long in that light. Um, but you can either get another IR emitter or um, get just carry your own batteries with you. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. All right, so on this one, I wanted to show you a deer right at dawn. You know, right at the break of day, you can barely see them with your naked eye. And then this was with the daytime vision. And then I switched over to night vision, and it stopped the recording. Um which is just a little bit of a pet peeve if you're trying to record at dawn or dusk. That was that green light at the end, that third option. This is that same deer, just a little bit later. I wanted to show you, I mean, you can see the individual corn, uh, kernels at 100 yards, which is, is fantastic, I think. Um, not that great of a buck, but, you know, it's worth getting a video of him, right? It's pretty cool to see him. Um, and then right after this, we're going to go out a little bit to, I zoomed out just a little bit, and then panned over to see a doe at about 250 yards. Um, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty vivid colors. So this was that same buck leaving. This is about 200 yards away. Just pretty surprising how well you can see and zoom in, and it's still pretty clear. Um, you got to mess with the focus a little bit, but... I mean, I'm really impressed with the clarity of the scope.
So, of course, we spread some corn out to hunt for some pigs. And when you're hunting for pigs, you see deer. And then, when you know, good bucks. But then when you're hunting for bucks, you see pigs. It's just the way it goes. But, you know, this is about 200 yards away. That one's maybe 175. Um, nice little buck. And then zoom out, see the corn we spread for the pigs. Freaking stealer. Thief deer. And then zoom out and then zoom back in. Another little young deer right here. And I'd say he's right at about 200 yards. This is what those legs are for. Um, I think he, this guy's about 250 yards, maybe. Really surprising. I know he's in the shadow and the clarity isn't the best, but. And he's a young deer. It's a good looking buck. But this guy, standing broadside right here, is. I think it's a nine point, maybe 10. And I really like that deer. He's kind of young on the young side. And you can see how shaky the camera is. It's because I didn't have a tripod with me. I was sitting down. That's not the best way to go when trying to record stuff with a scope. And now we get to the fun stuff. Shooting some deer. So this doe was, I think I said 250 yards. It's right in that clearing right there. That's what you can see from just looking at the phone. Uh, my father-in-law is actually shooting this one and I'm recording it as he shoots. Um, he misses once, just a little under, right there, and then, got her. Pretty good shot at 250 yards, I think. So I was just trying to pan and see if I could see where she fell. She ended up falling right there. Um, it was a good shot. And this is a shot at a doe at 80 yards. He's got a little young, I think he's actually an 11 point or 12 point. He's got some little kickers on his G2s just below where I'm filming that doe. Um, I'm actually going to take this one right here, but it's not a very good shot right there. It's just, if you're a little lower, a little high, you hit something else. I mean, it's 80 yards. I don't think I'm going to miss, but... Why try to send it in a smaller window when she's going to give me an opportunity here in a minute? So I'm just kind of waiting her out, waiting her out. Chicken behind her, I guess. And then, I still don't like that buck. Because you see he can raise up like that. It's not a great idea. So fixing to take the shot. Bam. Sausage. Alright, so on this one, this is a deer at 400 yards. Like I said, it didn't have a tripod. And I'm fixing to show you a picture of what it looks like from the bluff we're sitting on. I mean, it's right under that big evergreen tree I'm pointing at. And it's a long ways away. But I'm fixing to take the shot. Right about now. And... It wasn't the best shot. I got her in the spine, and I ended up having to take another shot to take her down. I had stopped recording for some reason. All right, on to the pros and cons. Some things I really, really liked about the scope. Number one, the full color daytime. Uh, the last scope I used, it was night vision. It was black and white in the daytime, and that is just a turnoff for me. I, I just didn't like it. I like being able to see everything in color and recording in color. Um, I really like that aspect of it. And the night vision was very clear. Uh, clear to the point that I could tell the difference between a raccoon and a beaver, right? Uh, I saw a lot of complaints about the zoom feature being really grainy. Um, I think if you get up to like the 16 or 32, it is a little grainy, right? But I could still see 400 yards in the daytime and know that it was a doe I was shooting, which I could not have done um, with most other Skype scopes I have or have used. One of the things that I read was a con beforehand was the weight. But to me, this is not that heavy. Uh, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, I've held some, the older brand night vision stuff was extremely heavy. And this is not something that I'm scared to take walking for miles and miles, right? If you're hunting hogs, tracking them afterwards, you gotta carry it with you in case they're not down. Um, I also read a lot of reviews which I kind of guess you're doing right now. You're not, uh, you're doing exactly what I did before I bought this scope, or you should. I mean, you need to look into every aspect of spending a little bit of money on something like this. And towards that point, this scope 
I don't remember the exact price, but it was less than $600. Um, I know that's not cheap for a scope, right? But that's really cheap for a night vision scope, especially with all the added features it has, like um, recording and how easy to use the interface is. I know there's the ATN that's out right now is like eight or 900 bucks, whatever it is. And it is um, not as user friendly, I would say. The interface is a little more awkward to use. Um, but this one's very intuitive. This is one of the first night vision, night vision scopes I've used and it was really easy to get out of the package and use within 10 minutes I was shooting on paper, right? One of the other pros of it is the five to six gun. I don't remember what it was five or six. I should remember that. Um, gun settings that you can set. So you can take this scope off and put it in another gun and sight it in for that gun as well, right? And then anytime you want to change the scope, you don't have to go about resighting in the gun, which is awesome. I do have a couple cons. First and foremost, as you saw in the video, I'd only been using this scope a couple hours when the IR illuminator basically became unusable um, out to 150, 200 yards. I mean, it was impossible to see. But on the specs, when you read the reviews, it says it can only see 200 yards with this setup, you know, with, with everything that comes in the package. But I was able to see about 300 yards when I started um, using it that night with this IR illuminator in there. The only problem I have with it is just the batteries suck, right? It's a CR123A and it just two hours is not long enough I'm gonna be sitting up on that bluff for six hours which I can just take batteries with me I just didn't like that part of the product um, you can buy uh, different external illuminators after the fact I think they was there something like 50 bucks or something for a really good one the only other thing I didn't like about the scope and it was just for filming right is at dusk time when you switch between modes uh, night vision or day vision night vision and then green vision which is the day the nighttime green vision it stops recording I don't, I don't know why that's a feature. I, I guess it's something in the processor. But unless you're editing videos to put on YouTube or something, it's not something that's really going to bother you at all. I just want you to be aware of it in case you are and you switch over and it stops recording. You don't realize it and you kill something awesome. I can understand why that could be irritating. And the last con that I have for this thing is that... I didn't buy it sooner. I mean, I waited around and waited around and looked and looked and looked. And then this, I, this is the first one I looked at because it was one of the cheaper ones. I should have just pulled the trigger on it. Sorry for the pun. I should have pulled the trigger on it when I first looked at it and had the money to buy it. Right. Anyways, thanks for watching my channel. If you like this review or anything about this video, maybe me, I don't know. Hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you.